Hello again, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and today's class is IAAS Introduction. So this is Introduction to Infrastructure as a Service. So this is one of the things that you have to be thinking about once you start thinking about creating cloud architectures for your organization. So when you start moving things up into the cloud, you have to be thinking about what it is you're going to be moving up into the cloud, why it is you're going to be moving it up into the cloud, and how you are going to do it. Now again, when we are thinking about the cloud, one of the biggest problems uh, that we have as professionals when people talk about cloud, the cloud, is they think it is just like one big thing. It is like the cloud. We're going to move everything up to the cloud. We're going to move up the firewall up to the cloud. We're going to move word processing up to the cloud. We're going to move data back up to the cloud. We, they just talk about the cloud. A lot of people don't actually dissect all the different components of the cloud so that it's easier to understand what is going on and it is easier to actually start doing migrations. So before, I did a class on software as a service. So software as a service is where you move your software up into the cloud. So no longer is software actually installed onto your computer or your tablet or your mobile device. The software is actually up in the cloud and you just simply access it through something like a web browser or a thin client. Instead of the software being installed directly onto your computer, it is up on a server somewhere and you simply access it. So when we start talking about IaaS, what we are talking talking about is moving your infrastructure to the crowd to the cloud. This is not the same as software as a service. This is not the same as platform as a service. And this is not the same as metal as a service. So all of these are concepts uh, for moving technology up into the cloud, but they revolve around different things. So SaaS or software as a service revolves around moving your software up into the cloud. So when we're talking about infrastructure as a service, the first thing that we have to, to really define is what is infrastructure. So again, whenever we talk about these AAS type concepts as a service, we really have to define what it is we are talking about. So when we're talking about infrastructure as a service, basically what we are doing is we are moving the equipment up into the cloud, the infrastructure. So before we moved the software to the cloud, now we are moving the infrastructure to the cloud. So what do I mean by, by when I say we're moving the infrastructure to the cloud? What this means is we're moving basically the racks of server equipment up into the cloud and letting somebody else deal with their, their basic functioning. So what this means is things like your PBX or your telephone system. So back in the old days, back in 2005, if you wanted a telephone system for your company, it, you actually had to go out and you had to go to Avaya or Nortel or Switchbox or some company. You had to spend a lot of money to buy a physical telephone system. You then had to install that telephone system into your organization's building and then you had to connect all the telephones. So we're talking about infrastructure. We're talking about that actual physical box that you had to buy. Well now with hosted voice over IP solutions, you no longer have to buy that piece of infrastructure that can be hosted somewhere else. So instead of having to spend five or ten thousand dollars on a big box that's going to sit there routing telephone calls, you can simply have voice over IP telephones sitting on everybody's desk. Those voice over IP telephones now connect to a service on the cloud. And so that is that is what we're talking about when we're talking about infrastructure as a service. So there's a lot of different things that you can purchase as infrastructure as a service. So one of the things a, a lot of people know about now is that you can rent servers in the cloud. So these are full-fledged servers that you pay your however much money per month and you get access to, you get full control over. So EliTheComputerGuy.com and some of the other projects that I do are run on a dedicated server that I purchased from oneandone.com. I pay $100 a month and I have a Linux server with like uh, 12 gigs of RAM and a quad-core processor and a terabyte storage, 
but that all resides wherever their data center is. I buy a contract for that server, but now I no longer have to worry about it physically. I don't have to worry about what to do if the power supply dies. I don't have to worry about what to do if a hard drive fails or the CPU fails or any of that. I get the service of their infrastructure and they deal with all of that all on their own. So when we're talking about this infrastructure as a service, these are the types of things that we're, we're talking about, that basically somebody else owns the server, somebody else owns a telephone system, even firewalls. So there's a lot of network services now that are being sold as a service. So back in the old days of 2008, if you wanted a good firewall on your network, what you would have to do is you'd have to go to Cisco or some other company, buy a firewall, put it on your network, do all the configurations, and hope, hope your, your users weren't doing something screwy and that everything would actually work how it was supposed to. Now you can actually have your network connect to a hosted firewall, and that hosted firewall is provided as a service, so you, all you have to do is you have to call up the company and you say, hey, I need port 80 opened for these clients, and they will go in and they will program it all out and it will simply work. So even things like firewalls, you can now purchase as a service. So that is what we're talking about. Whenever we're talking about, you know, these infrastructure as a service, the server as a service, the telephone system as a service, the firewall as a, a service. Now, the big thing with this that makes it different than platform as a service or metal as a service, these are classes we will have later, is that there is a basic operating system on whatever you are interacting with. And basically all you are doing is modifying the configurations. So when I leased my dedicated server, the server as a service, it already had Linux installed. I did not get to say I want Mint or Arch or BSD. Basically, I went to the provider. They said, we have these three operating systems pick one. The same thing with the, the voice over IP provider. If you want to go with OnSIP as a uh, hosted uh, voice over IP provider, everything is already there. The operating system, the configuration, all you do is you go in and you set up the individual telephone accounts, voicemail boxes, that kind of thing. But you don't get to really get your hands all dirty with any kind of code. Basically, they're just providing you these full functional systems as a service. Now, one of the reasons that the these these infrastructure as a service has become much more pos uh, profitable or, or profitable, usable, whatever, lately, is because the cost of bandwidth has gone down dramatically. So one of the reasons before, like why so much stuff is going up to the cloud now, is that we have more and more bandwidth that we can actually use, especially from the, the, the business point of view. Now you as a consumer at your house, you may not have great bandwidth options, but for businesses, they generally do, and they generally have the money to actually be able to pay for good quality bandwidth. Here in Baltimore, uh, as an example, you can get one gigabit per second to the premises uh, internet connection. Now it's going to cost you $3,000 a month for a service level agreement, one gigabit per second connection to your business. But if you are a real business, if you have 100 employees, if you're actually profitable and bringing in revenue, once you break it out, $3,000 isn't necessarily a lot of money, especially if you start moving all of these services, all of the infrastructure to the cloud so that you now no longer have to pay local technicians to repair things. So whenever we move anything up to the cloud, whenever we, we commoditize any of these services or these offerings, it, also, it always becomes less expensive on the aggregate to support. So basically, if you have a server, if you have a telephone system um, in your premises and somebody has to come and repair it, they're going to charge you $100 to $150 an hour plus a service charge to come out there. It's going to be very, very expensive. And so if somebody needs to go to every single office that has a telephone system to fix a telephone system or the infrastructure, it's going to be very, very expensive. On the other hand, if you, if you turn those, those voice over IP systems, you put them up into the cloud, 
it now becomes a lot less expensive. You can have one technician and it's administer a thousand or ten thousand of these virtual voice over IP servers where it would have taken hundreds of technicians to actually run around in the past. So the reason that so much stuff is going up to the cloud now to be used as a service, including this infrastructure, is because the bandwidth has become so affordable. Again, a lot of you guys, you know, if you're in high school, if you're in college, when I say a gigabit per second connection is going to cost you $3,000, you're like, oh, but believe me, that's actually very, 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 very inexpensive. And for more, many businesses, it's well worth it, especially if they can migrate so many of these solutions out of their server rooms and up to a provider um, that will actually be able to do uh, whatever it is they need to do. Now, one of the things that you need to be thinking about professionally is that these things such as infrastructure as a service are the things that are most dangerous to you as a technician. Again, as we move more and more things to the cloud, as we commoditize more and more of these systems, pe they, people simply need fewer administrators to be able to work with them. So even as more and more people have been using computers, even as companies have been growing, many companies have actually been able to shrink their help desk staffs, shrink their technical support staffs because they don't need as many technicians anymore. And as we move this stuff up to the cloud, that is going to be one of the things that you have to keep in mind. So professionally, one of the things I always talk to you guys about, it's this is one of the reasons why it's good to be thinking about things like project management, things to think about like consulting. So advising people uh, how to move their products and services up to the cloud at the end of the day most likely will provide far much more money than simply learning how to administer systems and then watching your job go as it disappears up to the cloud. So those are some of the things to be thinking about. Again, we're going to be doing some more classes on these AAS as a service uh, type concepts. We did the software as a service, this is infrastructure as a service. So again, infrastructure as a service, think about taking those server racks and putting them up into the cloud. Think about telling, taking the telephone PBX and putting it up into the cloud. Think about taking that digital surveillance system and putting it up into the cloud. So this is the infrastructure. Basically, the infrastructure is now up in the cloud. You simply have little clients of some sort, either client computers or client cameras or client telephones that then connect up to this infrastructure it is a big thing. It is a great thing. If you are um, responsible for making decisions for your organization, this is a way you can save a lot of money and actually get some pretty good quality results out of it. So it's something uh, that you should think about. But again, this is different than platform as a service or metal as a service. And we will talk about those and other classes. So, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy. This was Infrastructure as a Service, IAAS Introduction. As always, I enjoy teaching this class and look forward to seeing you at the next one.